During the winter 2021 anime season, Horimiya, one of the most popular manga of all time, received an anime adaptation by Cloverworks. It was very well received, and currently has an 8.31 rating on my anime list. But did you know that this actually isn't the first anime adaptation of Horimiya, aka Horisan to Miyamura-kun? There's also an OVA by Gonzo and Hoods Entertainment with four episodes out, released in October 2012, March 2014, March 2015, and December 2018. Interestingly, two more episodes are slated to be released in May 2021, a few months after the Cloverworks adaptation finished airing. The main thing you need to know about the Horimiya OVA is that it's based on the original webcomic of Horimiya, whereas the Cloverworks adaptation draws from the manga in addition to the webcomic. I didn't find out about the OVA until I was in the middle of the 2021 show, so once I finished, I decided to watch the OVA and see how it stacks up against the new anime. The answer is, surprisingly, pretty well. I'm going to go over four different areas and compare the Horimiya OVA to the anime in each. Number one, animation. Number two, voice acting and sound. Number three, characters. And number four, plot and pacing. Before I continue, I just want to note that there will be some light spoilers for both versions of the show in this video, though most of the time I'll be talking about any plot details in a general sense. Let's start with animation. At first glance, the difference in the animation between the OVA and the Cloverworks anime is kind of laughable. The OVA has low detail drawings and rather unsophisticated animation, looking more like a college project than something done by a professional studio. In contrast, the animation from Cloverworks is jaw-dropping, with sharp lines and immaculate detail for even the most mundane of things. The characters' personalities are very well embodied by their facial expressions, and there are tons of really neat artistic choices, like fading out the background during emotional moments. That said, while the art in the Cloverworks adaptation of Horimiya is objectively better, I don't think the OVA art is bad. Because it's relatively simple and undetailed, it really embodies the feeling of the original webcomic that it draws from. In fact, the OVA actually looks significantly better than the webcomic while still having a similar art style. There's definitely a charm to it, and while I initially thought I'd be disappointed by the art since I'd just come from the Cloverworks version, I actually wasn't. One key thing I noticed about the animation in the OVA is that it focuses heavily on the characters, while the backgrounds are there more to just provide structure to the scenes. That way, you're always focusing on the interactions between the people in the show. I think it's a testament to how good Horimiya's story is that I was captivated the whole time even with relatively simple images. In addition, the OVA's animation does improve over the course of the four episodes, which were released years apart. If you look at a few shots of episode 4 compared to episode 1, there's a stark contrast. I'm looking forward to seeing how the final two episodes look in May. Now that we've covered animation, let's move on to the voice acting and sound. One fun fact about the voice acting is that in the OVA, Miyamura is played by Yoshitsugu Matsuoka, who is Kirito in Sword Art Online. And in the Cloverworks anime, Hori is played by Haruka Tomatsu, who is Asuna in SAO. In general, I think both the OVA and the 2021 anime have very strong voice casts, and they actually sound very similar to one another. Both versions of Miyamura have quiet, slightly raspy voices and both versions of Hori are adept at switching between low, nervous speech and boisterous yelling. Even the casting for side characters like Toru and Yoshikawa is pretty similar. Overall, I do think that the Cloverworks adaptation's voice acting is slightly better because there's more intensity during emotional moments. That said, the emotional story beats still hit well in the OVA, and the quality of the voice acting serves to compensate for some of the depth that's lost through the lower detail art. I think you could have put the OVA voice cast into the Cloverworks version without any complaints because it sounds very professional. As far as sound design goes, I think the Cloverworks adaptation puts more detail into the background, but that's typically not something that really impacts how I view a show, but rather it's something I see as a nice bonus. When it comes to background music, the two versions of the show have similar touches with a lot of quiet piano with percussion. The Cloverworks show has a lot more orchestral stuff too though, and I think it does a better job of bringing it to a crescendo during emotional shots. One unique thing about the OVA is that it has no opening song, but has a different ending song during every episode, all of which are enjoyable. The Horimiya anime only has one opening and one ending, but both of them have gained a place among my favorite recent anime songs. Next, I want to quickly discuss the characters in both versions of the show. For the most part, the characters and their interactions are the same, since they're coming from the same general story. But there are a few key differences. 
For example, the weird red-haired homeroom teacher doesn't feature in the OVA, and Yoshikawa's quirk of wearing her sweater sleeves over her hands is present, but far less emphasized. There are even some minor personality differences. When the student council president Sengoku is introduced in the OVA, he's a lot more laid back and forty with his girlfriend. In contrast, in the Cloverworks version, he's a lot more reserved and only opens up later on. And now it's time to talk about plot and pacing. The Cloverworks version of Horimiya is a great show, but the story is rushed to fit into 12 episodes. Everything that's done is done well, but it could have used more time to flesh out things so certain character introductions and development didn't feel out of the blue. Well, the Horimiya OVA is even more condensed than the 2021 anime, though not by a ton. The plot in episode 4 of the OVA leaves off about halfway through episode 5 of the Cloverworks adaptation. The OVA tends to sacrifice more side character moments in return for spending more time on the main couple, Hori and Miyamura. So by cutting out certain moments, such as Remy's conversation with Hori and talks between Hori and her mother, the OVA is able to move forward at a similar pace to the anime. However, the OVA isn't just the story of the anime with a bunch of things cut out. There are quite a few things that appear in the OVA that don't show up in the Cloverworks adaptation, such as a scene with Miyamura and Hori's brother Sota, and a scene with Hori and Miyamura in the rain. There are also differences in the ways different scenes play out. For example, in the Cloverworks adaptation, Remy loses important documents because she drops them in the hall when she bumps into Miyamura. In the OVA, she makes mistakes calculating them and throws them in the trash, after which Miyamura finds them. Essentially, if you want to see the most content adapted possible, you should watch both the OVA and the 2021 anime. I found it very enjoyable to experience the unique scenes each version of the show had, as well as to see the same scenes adapted in slightly different ways. All in all, I think the Cloverworks adaptation of Horimiya is the better show. It looks better, sounds better, and presents more facets of the original story, including a lot of side character content. That said, the Horimiya OVA is still a quality show and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought I'd be disappointed by it after watching the beautiful 2021 show, but I actually found that the OVA enhanced my experience. Even though it was made first, I do think the OVA is better to watch after the Cloverworks show because it's even more condensed and it's good to already have some extra context for why certain things are happening. I'm looking forward to the release of the final two OVA episodes in May. In terms of overall enjoyment, I think I'd give the 2021 anime an 8 out of 10 and the OVA a 7 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for weekly content. I'm Matrix from Matrix A&M, Anime and More, and I hope you have a great day.